Oh, there's Chatty Chad. Welcome back to, <laughs> to our channel. channel. Welcome back, everyone. Da, 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 da. It's good to see you. Well, hello, everyone. Hi. Welcome back. We're so glad you're here. <laughs> you know, we got Riley on today. If y'all are one of the OG masters <laughs> fam, then you know that Riley was on the channel in our original. Back when she did all her editing and you were yes. hustling. Yes, that was before I like talked to Chad as being <laughs> on the channel. Yeah, it was just you on yes. your couch in LA. Yes, and I was like, we're just gonna have a little girl chat about singleness. <laughs> and a lot of y'all love that series so much and you've been asking for two years, when is Riley coming back on the channel to impart some more fire wisdom? Well, I'm and back. So, she's back, she's mm -hmm. fiery. And those of you who don't know, Riley and I became friends actually before I ever moved to California. She was friends with Chad. Mm -hmm. And she actually had, she's like a big reason why I moved to California. We originally met and she is so prophetic. Like she just has a way of really like seeing you and um, speaking into your life very directly. And I remember her looking at me and just speaking so clearly and it was exactly what I needed to hear in the moment and I moved two months <laughs> later. Um, so anyways, long story short, Riley's incredible. She also has a blog called, called Journal of the 27 Year Old Virgin. Yep, and she's Riley with courage on all socials. Highly mm -hmm. encourage you to go follow her. Everything she posts is super encouraging and straight from the Lord. On the topic of singleness, mm -hmm. um, Riley just spoke at the Heart of Dating conference and you were talking on two types of singleness. And I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet. And I feel like I just want you to like start. Okay. What even is like open and closed singleness? Yeah. And then we can like dive in more. Deeper. Okay. So yeah. open and closed singleness. So closed singleness is when you're not dating anyone or considering any love interest. And then open singleness is when you're putting your heart out there, you're at proactively going out on dates. Yeah. And so it's this idea to understand because in Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 11, it teaches us that there's a season for everything. Yeah. And including a season for love. Yeah. And it says that God has made things beautiful and it's timing, but we so yeah. often act in a season that we're not meant to be in. It's right. like trying to wear yeah. a bikini in yeah. winter, in snow. And, and you're like, I'm really chilly right now. <laughs> and yeah. God's like, um, that's because <laughs> I didn't want you in that season. Yeah. And, yeah. and our desires and our excitement for love, yeah. I mean, we jump out into the love scene and God yeah. is like, girl, like, or man, like, I want to, like, heal you. Yeah. And so I created this theory. And first of all, you know you should be in close singleness when your self-love isn't healthy. Yeah. You know, because it says you can only love, like, I can only love Tori as much as I love myself. I can right. only love somebody I go on a date with yeah. as much as I love myself. Yeah. And I had this pastor in New Zealand. He said, Riley, you date your self-esteem. Mm. You date who okay. you think you deserve. Right. We go out right. there, and if you yeah. have a track record of like dating people that are yeah. healthy right. or good fit for you, yeah. it's because there's something about our self-talk that we need to change. Or yeah. maybe you're if you purpose, don't think you're worth it. Yeah. If you don't think you're worth dating someone who treats you better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or maybe it's your dating, um, you, don't, you don't see the purpose of dating as mm -hmm. the way that the Bible sees it. Yeah. Or maybe your view of marriage, like you grew up with a family that your mom and dad like just like didn't give you a good perspective of marriage and sometimes another thing is like where we can be attracted to our own brokenness I know yeah. in the past like I was attracted to things I hadn't yet healed but God mm. wants you to be attracted to people who line up with your destiny yeah um and wait can you explain that a little deeper yeah like being attracted to Mm -hmm. that brokenness like what does that mean so for me my dad grew up like traveling a lot mm -hmm. and so I tended to be attracted to men who were emotionally and physically distant and and yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so I had to go to that yeah. part of me and allow me and God to heal that part of me so that I could be attracted to people that would be because a purpose is like you're trying to find somebody who's good for you mm -hmm. and great for the kingdom yeah and it's about finding someone that together you can advance the kingdom with. Yeah. But we can pick people that wouldn't be the best fit for us because yeah. we still haven't looked at that thing that happened mm -hmm. when we were 10 and mm -hmm. allow God to sit with us in that moment. Yeah. Okay, that's good. All yeah. right, keep going. So then, so open and close. So close is this beautiful time. It typically happens after heartbreak or divorce or breakup yeah. where you give yourself the, the time to heal. Yeah. 
I said, like, you know, like, don't, like, leave the rebound to the basketball players. Okay, okay, but you know why this is so funny? It's because y'all know Chad and I's love story, and the second time he got friend-zoned was because he didn't realize that he needed to be in close mm, singleness. See, that's good. Because I noticed. I was like, you definitely have some, like, healing mm-hmm. to do. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be your rebound. And I'm not your therapist. <laughs> and so you need That's to like so have a, a season of hiddenness with the Lord while mm-hmm. while you work through that, you know, while you work mm-hmm. through that previous breakup. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because you have to do that. Like you can't just move straight on and pretend like that relationship didn't happen. Like yeah. it takes time to practice that. And sometimes soul ties are involved. And so there's like a mm-hmm. spiritual battle that has to be faced with that. Just as a heads up, I do think we're actually going to be uh, posting our video on soul ties soon. So if you have more questions on soul ties, yes, stay tuned because we got that coming at you. So love anyways, that. keep going. Yeah, no, but I love that because we we date somebody, we expect a future with them when our yeah. imagination like lines up for something, it doesn't happen. Yeah. So we have to give space for God to like rewire our brains to imagine yeah. a different future. It's so true. I feel like break up, the, one of the hardest parts of breakups is breaking up with the future that you've envisioned. Yeah. Because I feel like it really is so hard to not envision that. Like when you're dating mm-hmm. someone or even like, this is on a separate note, but even in our journey of trying to get pregnant, mm-hmm. it'll be like every month I'll envision like, oh, well, maybe it's this month because like, I'm going to see this friend or we're going to go on this thing. And then I can yeah. like reveal it to this person <laughs> on Christmas and it can be like this kind of thing. And so then when I like start my period, I find out it's like, oh, I'm breaking up with the idea mm-hmm. or that like thing that I like got excited about mm-hmm. that was just kind of all in my head. And so I feel like it's the same way with relationships sometimes is mm-hmm. sometimes, and sometimes I feel like a lot of people don't break up even when they're in toxic relationships because they're so yeah. attached to the future mm-hmm. that they've envisioned, but mm-hmm. it's not the reality of the now. Yeah. In our last yeah. YouTube video, we talked a lot about loneliness. Yeah. You know, we stay in relationships because we're really terrified of loneliness. Yeah. But lone- singleness does not communicate a lack of intimacy. Yeah. Like Pete Skiskiskizero, he writes in his book that marriage shows the depth of God's love, but singleness shows the breadth of God's love. Wow. Like, you cool. know, you and Chad, you get deep together and it's yeah. like a deep intimacy. But yeah. with singleness, like when you were single, yeah. like your community was just like so diverse. Totally. And you yeah. could just, you had this freedom to hang out with different people in different yeah. seasons of your yeah. life. You make decisions based on you. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You don't, mm-hmm. ba- you don't make decisions based on mm-hmm. we. Yeah, and I think, you know, there's somebody watching us right now that you really feel like I'm in this relationship mm-hmm. because I don't I don't want to step out of my comfort zone. I don't want to feel lonely. Yeah. I just want to say to you, like, God's got you. He's yeah. got a community ahead of you, yeah. and God always prepares for us when we have to step out of our comfort zone. Like, there's a miracle on the other side of this hard mm-hmm. decision. There's peace yeah. on the other side of this hard decision. Yeah. And... I just want to say, like, God never gives us downgrades. Like, he always gives you upgrades. And so I feel like a lot of people think, well, what if I never do better? Mm. You know, what if there's not someone better out there for me? And so you settle for Mm. less than God's best for you because of fear. And we don't serve a God of fear. And so if fear is the only reason that you're not being obedient, then it's something that you really need to take to the Lord because that's how the enemy works Mm -hmm. is fear. And so we need to like have a sober assessment of why we're making a certain decision. And if it's just because you think you can't do better, (laughs) then that's a lie of the enemy. You know what I mean? And so that's something that you need to take to your prayer room Mm -hmm. and war with Jesus about because... yeah. It's just not a good place to be if you're thinking that Mm -hmm. God can't do better because you're putting the God of the universe into a little box and saying, and you're putting it all on you, you know, like Mm -hmm. it's, it's God, (laughs) like, come on, you know, he can do so much for you. And he's also never going to take somebody out of your life that you need. Yeah. You know, if this is a person listening right now and you've been broken up with and you think, well, I thought he was it. Well, God yeah. has something better. Yeah. And just to share a story to give evidence of that, I let I met this lady the other day. She was dressed in black, leaning against a Picasso in a billionaire's house. Casual. And I know. And I go up to her and I start <laughs> asking her about her love story. She was yeah. like 70. And you know, just like you meet somebody, you're like, I want to be your friend. Yeah. It was like when we yeah. met, I was like, yes. we're friends. I mean, Sealed. I mean, done. I mean, first time, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> 
And so this lady's like leaning out. She's holding a glass of Cabernet. And I like yeah. get to know her story. She tells yeah. me about how she's 35 back in the day. So that would be mm-hmm. like the today's equivalent of 55 and single. Yeah. She's dating this photographer and she's like, has that same thing. Yeah. It's good, but it's not great. And she yeah. didn't have peace. Good, but not God. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we so, and Tori once told me, like, if it's a maybe, it's a no. Yeah. Like, if you feel like there's that step voice inside you mm-hmm. when you're late at night and you're in your bed and you're like, oh, you don't have peace. I'm not satisfied with this. So yeah. she trusts God. Yeah. She trusts the God of the universe that can created this world that parts the Red Sea to provide for her. And she breaks yeah. up with this photographer. Yeah. She's now 36 and single. And she's like, all right. But she was determined. The one thing I love about her story, yeah. she did not give up hope and her yeah. faith in God. Yeah. A few months later, she gets asked out on this date by this this young man. And he, like, they go on this date. At the end of the date, she's like, yo, this is this it. Is like, it. best date of my life. Yeah. And the next day, he's like, I need to sort something out. She's like, I don't know what you need to sort out. The Can next go day, he goes... Time? No, 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 worse than that. The next day, he goes, and he's been casually dating five women at the same time. I know. I know. And, like, very casual. Yeah, and he yeah, gives yeah. them, like, he puts their far, uh, his uh, card in, on file, and he's like, guys, eat whatever you want. I'm sorry it's over with you. I'm at the love of my life. He marries this girl, this wow. lady, six months later. Wow. That was her house. She married a billionaire. Casual. And the reason I share that story with you is because God has great for you yeah. but great comes out of a place of submission and surrender yeah. and obedience, obedience. Yeah. we're like obedience. i say god's love language is obedience yeah like yeah. we yeah. we have to just be obedient to what yeah. he wants for us and knowing that he's gonna give us great yeah and i also feel like there was a lot of questions that we got for you guys and i don't even know how long we've been talking 12 minutes <laughs> i think i think we're gonna end up being a part two because i feel like ryan and i could talk about this for like three hours <laughs> And trying to get us to talk about this for any <laughs> short amount of time is very difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like a lot of y'all were asking, like, how can I be content inside of my singleness? And how can mm-hmm. I enjoy it and embrace it as an adventure and a love story with God and not something mm-hmm. where I feel like my life doesn't start until I'm married? Because that's yeah. such a lie. Like, your life starts right now it started yesterday it started like when you were born Mm -hmm. and so I think that the enemy uses that tactic of well you can't have this or your Mm -hmm. purpose doesn't start until this and then you think that this season of your life doesn't matter and it's so not true I really think what you do before the I do is really important you know like what you're doing now to prepare yourself to be a good wife to be a good husband Mm -hmm. is so important and it's going to pay dividends in the Mm -hmm. long run in your marriage but if you look at this season like oh i'm just gonna like keep living my life until Mm -hmm. that day comes that day is not gonna like come any faster if you're not focused on becoming you know who god wants you to be and enjoying it and being content and i feel like i talk about riley all the time when it comes to embracing singleness with like an excitement (laughs) like truly because i feel like you do such a good job of like being adventurous and loving life and loving people and growing community and walking in your purpose and writing and speaking at conference, you're living inside your purpose right now. And so I think it's just a testament to who God is and who like where your intimacy with the Lord comes from. And so I would love if you just like quickly talk about like how quick tips on like how to be content and enjoy your yeah. season of singleness. Yeah, well, I was just thinking like like let's say this is a gift, right? Okay. And I give you a gift and yes. you never open it. Be very upset. Yeah, and yeah. I would be like, well, I, this is a gift. Like, yeah. I chose it out for you. I, like, yeah. I was intentional about this. But yeah. you just, but you were like this. Yeah. And Paul calls singleness a gift. It is, yeah. And how many of us just, like, don't open it, let yeah. alone don't use it, let alone yeah. don't use it to benefit the kingdom. Right. And yeah. so I was like, at first, I opened it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to, like, just appreciate the season. Then I started yeah. using it. And then I started using it to benefit other people. Yeah. I was like, well, if God's got me single. Yeah. I have to trust he has a reason. And yeah. I was like, well, the reason must be I must be helping other people thrive in their singleness. I'm yeah. going to just do that. Yeah. And so I just think there's so many of us that have the gift of singleness, but we haven't yeah. opened or used the gift of singleness. Yeah. And the other thing I was thinking about as you were talking is, like, the story of the talents in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Yes. And how, like, yeah. in the way like this mm-hmm. the master gives them talents and he leaves yeah he comes back 
And he's like, this one guy doesn't do use it. it. Yeah. And so I just would encourage you, God's given you God-given gifts. Yeah. And it's for us to use them and yeah. multiply them. Yeah. And so in my singleness, like I've gotten busy with the things of the kingdom. Yeah. Like I work for the largest homeless shelter in San Francisco. I'm writing a book. I yeah. speak. Yeah. I like live in a tiny camper in San Diego. Like you're living your best life. And you it's really are. you can. Yeah. Like and and in doing so, you become like you, you know, quality attracts quality. Like, yeah. I'm just like, like okay, God. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm going to use it as much as I can. Yeah. And as you're running, mm-hmm. there you'll you'll look to your side and be like, oh, he's running too. Like, mm-hmm. he's doing kingdom work too. That's attractive to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's going to be attractive to him. And I think that something that's important is just because you're embracing your singleness, just because you're, like, happy and content, it doesn't mean that you don't have the yep. desire in your heart to meet someone. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's important to not feel bad for having the mm-hmm. desire just because you desire your future person doesn't mean mm-hmm. you can't be content in mm-hmm. the waiting for him or in the waiting for her. And there's mm-hmm. active things that you can be doing mm-hmm. to continue embracing it and praying for them. Like you, y'all already know, cause I mm-hmm. talked about it so much inside of the whole single next series, but like, I loved the 31 prayers for my future spouse. Like when I was single, because mm-hmm. at that time, I'm currently doing that by the way. <laughs> I love I'm like I love 10. Oh, it's per so, 10. It's so special <laughs> because I just remember being like, I don't know who he is. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I've met him or not yet, which I had, um, I just didn't know yet. <laughs> But I was like, but I know that he's prayed over right now. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm so excited for the day that we meet and I can look back on these days and say, this is what I was praying over you in this moment. Mm -hmm. And I actually remember, which is really crazy because I started the book when Chad was in a different relationship. And I remember praying, like, Lord, if he's in another relationship, that's not from you right now. Would you give him the discernment, the clarity and the courage to end that? And so it was just wild because that was the same month that he ended that relationship was when I was praying no. those prayers. And so it's so cool <laughs> because there's power in prayer and I could look back and be like, wow, mm. God, you hear me. Like you, you mm. heard there's power in prayer because to be honest, you know, sometimes it's tough. Like sometimes it's really mm. tough to be in the waiting and be like, Lord, are you hearing me? Do you know my desire? All these things. But keep in mind, the Lord is also preparing your person. He's preparing you in this season, but he's also preparing that person in this season. Because we've talked about it before, like, had Chad and I started dating way back in the day, like before the friend zones and all the things, I think our relationship would have looked really different. Because Mm -hmm. I think where you start really matters. And so making sure that you're in a healthy place. Because when Chad and I first met, I wasn't in a healthy place. I had a soul tie that wasn't broken. I had some stuff going on with my family that was really like, Mm. it was a lot. And so I feel like if Chad and I started dating, then Mm. we would have just gone through a lot of stuff. And I'm not saying it would have been bad, but at the time that we finally did start dating, our relationship with the Lord was thriving. I knew that I had a heart Mm. for ministry and for women and for people. And I knew that he did too. He was in seminary at the time and we loved yeah how much we both good for each other and great for the kingdom yeah i yeah. love that check, check. <laughs> and i think a really healthy yeah. mindset to be is is in is when you you don't need a relationship but you want one yeah and when exactly. those desires come up like 90 percent of the time i'm living my best set but best best life yeah but there's 10 percent where i'm like crying and i'm like yeah <laughs> Why am I still single? And in those moments, it's having self-compassion on yourself and knowing that God was the first, the one to put that desire of marriage in me. He's going to be the one to fulfill it. Yeah. And so just back to the open and closed singleness is like, you you know, maybe you just did this hard work. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, I had a year of closed singleness. I didn't day one. I didn't consider any love interest. I let God do that deep, slow work in me so that I could heal and thrive. And then I knew I was ready to enter open singleness put my heart, which is what I'm in right now. Yeah. is when I wanted a relationship but don't need it when yeah. I wasn't trying to date because I wanted to make my ex jealous or needed yeah. the attention or was a yeah. form of distraction instead I was genuinely interested in getting to know that person and yeah. God also shifts your perspectives yeah. like it's like character over image and yeah. like his per- like who he is in God over his looks yeah and also when your self-love is healthy 
And if that person rejects you, you handle it with grace. Because yeah. that was a sign for me that I was yeah. in an unhealthy place because people would reject me and I would be like straight away flirting with another guy or just yeah. like very yeah. just like unhealthy response yeah. to it. Yeah, no, that's so good. And, and I love too like that quote that says God's rejection is for your protection. Because mm-hmm. any person that's going to like reject you, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Just like, oh, you know, <laughs> and, and for me, you know, it's hard because Chad and I did go through friend zones and so a part of that feels like rejection. But when I look back on it, the conversations we had were because of discernment of season. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it was because the Mm -hmm. peace of God wasn't covering that. And so if you're wondering or if you're feeling rejected, truly like remember that that's God's protection and thank him for it. And also remember that it's okay to be sad. Like I think that's something (laughs) I like I've, I've learned this year with Mm -hmm. our other journey of waiting is that the Lord is near to the brokenhearted. Like yeah. he comforts you. He meets you there. And those are some of the most intimate moments I've ever had with the mm-hmm. Lord is when I'm honest with myself about where I'm at. Like when I'm mm-hmm. honest with myself about, mm-hmm. man, this is tough. Man, I'm sad. You know, like, and, and the Lord embraces me in those moments and then mm-hmm. reminds me of his truth and reminds me of his love and reminds me of his goodness, you know? Mm-hmm. And then I remember and he exchanges my sadness for joy. Like he exchanges my weeping for strength, you know, and the exchange rate we have with God is just insane. Cause it's like, take all my brokenness, take all this crap, you know what I mean? Like all this stuff that I don't want and he exchanges it for the fruits of the spirit. And so, but we can't have that. We can't walk in fruits of the spirit if we're not connected to the source. We're not connected to the vine. And so we have to make sure, especially, and that's why I say this is such a gift, is because it's undivided attention, Mm -hmm. undivided devotion. Mm -hmm. And so this is your time to be so rooted in the word of God, to deepen your love with him. Because in marriage, your relationship with God doesn't stop. Your relationship with God helps you love your spouse. I can only love Chad through the love I'm gaining from the Father. Yeah. And so it's it's vertical and then it's horizontal. And so in this season of singleness, you can receive that horizontal love and let it like overwhelm you and overflow into your community and your friends and the people that you encourage, your circle of influence. Like there is a purpose for this season. And so don't don't waste it. Don't wish it away. Like embrace it. The fact of the matter is, is you're not promised tomorrow, you know? And so you do need to live every single day like it could be your last. And that's not doom and gloom. That should excite you to like live life with a fullness of joy and with goodness of God. And so anyways, we like wrote down a ton of questions that y'all submitted and we didn't answer because we just started like rolling with a bunch of things. But we've been talking for a little while. So I think we're going to end up doing a part two and actually answering y'all's questions. You guys asked some good questions. Amazing questions. So anyways, we love you guys and we'll be seeing you in part two. <laughs> Bye. Do, 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 do. Nice. Do, do, that was do, like, do, that was do, good. Do. That was good information. <laughs>